Hey, how's it going? Mr. Bill here. And in this tutorial, I wanted to show you uh, how I've been splitting frequencies up lately. So in the past, I've usually done it using EQs or uh, <coughs> or using that phase technique that I was that I was doing a while ago. But I've uh, recently been doing it a different way. So this is the way I used to do it. Like I used to have two EQs. I put them in a rack or something like that. Um, you know, have uh, let's just put these in stereo mode. So I'd have one cutting at like 120. So you have all the high frequencies here. And then I would have another one also in stereo mode that was like cutting all, all the highs at 120 and this one would be cutting all the lows at 120. So um, you get something like this. And then um, you could just macro map both of these or whatever to a control and then move this around so you're changing your split point on both of them. So we have that on one of them and this on the other and then it sounds like this. It sounds pretty clean and um and you know you can you know, quickly put effects on like just the highs and leave the lows alone and stuff like that while all of that isn't being affected by the phase of the highs are so that that was the way that i was doing it before <clears throat> but the way i've been doing it lately is with the multi-band dynamics actually so i'll put this in a rack um i'll just duplicate this three times and i'm going to call one low one mid and one high and on the lows, I'm going to solo the lows. On the mids, I'm going to solo the mids. Uh, sorry, mid. And on the highs, I'm going to solo the highs. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to macro map the lows and the highs to a single macro control like this. Um, and simply by moving this control here, I'm changing the split point. And then we have low mids and highs rather than just lows and highs. So if we set this to say here, that's the lows, this is the mids, and this is the highs. And obviously because it's a compressor, if you want to compress them differently, you can just use this device itself to compress them, but I don't actually usually use it for that, because if I wanted to do that, I would just pull a single one in and then use the, the three bands here to, to compress it. But what, I'm, what I usually do is, um, you know, let's say I wanted to make this chord sound more interesting. You can hear when I turn the rack on and off, it's really transparent as well, like this is without it. And this is with it. You can you can barely hear a difference, which is good. Usually when I do it with EQs, I can always hear like this hissing sort of phase uh, issue. So let's say I want to put like vinyl distortion or something like that on the mids and just like make them a bit more like kind of dirty. So I'm just adding grit to the middle, you know, and that kind of gives it this sort of dirty sound. Makes it sound a bit thicker. And then maybe on the highs I could, uh, <coughs> <coughs> let's just make this a stereo EQ. It's going to take a little bit of the highs off maybe, like 3 dB. And then maybe you could put like a, a tiny reverb on it or something. I have like Ubic A, this is a really good one. Just adding like a tiny little bit of early reflections there. So this is without the effects altogether. And that's with them. This is actually making it a little bit out of time, I think. Just want that to be subtle, probably. So yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a nice way to thicken up a sound by affecting separate elements. Maybe with the lows, we could like, I don't know, distort them or something like that, make it a little bit dirtier down the bottom end. And then obviously I'd probably want to put some processing after this. And just cut a bit of the lows out anyway. So um, yeah, this is what it sounds like in the mix. Uh, let's just rack all of these together. <laughs> Yeah.
So yeah, sounds cool. Um, what I'll do is I'll make this rack available. I will, I will just, um, <clears throat> let's say ungroup it. Um, just delete all this extra crap. Um, I'll just ungroup everything, uh, have no effects on it, you know. And actually I kind of want to keep all of those effects just for the sake of this tune. But what I'll do is duplicate this rack. And then I'll delete the overdrive, delete the vinyl distortion, delete the EQ and the um, and the ambience processor. And then let's just call this um, Mr. Bill's multiband splitter. And then let's shut this rack down so when you open it, it's all nice and compact. And then let's call this uh, split point because this is where it's actually taking the split points from. <clears throat> and then let's name all of these ones just like a... Wait, you can name this a dot, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Name these all a dot. Like this. So you can rename any of these uh, controls on a macro rack just by hitting Control R. And then you can also color code them. So if, say for all of these ones that we're not using, let's just make these all black. Um, and then let's make the, the split point purple or pink or something actually we could probably macro map more stuff onto this to make it a more useful rack you know <clears throat> like we could macro map the uh say the input and the output volume of the highs to well actually that's that's not that let's unmap that uh so these are the lows so let's map these the input and the output to macro map uh to macro control two the mids Let's map these to the third one. And the highs. Wait, what? Highs, lows, highs, here we go. Map these to the fourth one, like this. Um, and then we can call this like uh, low vol. So this is low volume, um, mid vol, mid volume, obviously, and high vol. <clears throat> and then maybe let's make these ones all green or something because they're all kind of like elements. They're similar to each other. Sounds pretty good. Uh, actually, you know what we could do? We could also macro map all of the dry wet controls to a fifth one and we could have like a split amount. So it's like how much of, you know, giving the whole thing a dry wet control basically. Actually, I might as well just leave these all open just in case you guys want to like mess with the compression settings or whatever. Shut this. Um, split mount. Mount. There we go. Let's make this, I don't know, orange or something. All right, cool. I'll save that. Mr. Bill's multiband splitter. And then if you ever want to use this, you just obviously go into your audio, f what is it? audio effect rack. Yeah, there you go. Just go into your audio effect rack and then open it. It should be there. Actually, I should initialize this first, right? That should be a hundred. Okay. Overwrite, yes. It's gonna overwrite it. I hope so. Oh no. It's crashing my Ableton. Shit. Ah, oh, here we go. Cool. So yeah, then when you pull it in, it's obviously normal. And then I actually I wonder if you could map the solos to something. No, I don't think you can. That would be cool though if you could like have the solo buttons here too instead of having to open the rack to use these ones. But I guess like we could just shut down that portion of the rack and have this portion open. And you can also, um, <clears throat> you can color code these two actually. So like what if we made the low green and then the mid like a darker green and then the high like this sort of weird bluey green. Yeah, it's starting to look like a pretty pro rack. Let's overwrite that shit again. Alright, this is gonna freeze my Ableton again, most likely. Yes, yes. Alright, let's see. Here we go. So, let's open it now. This is what you should get. I'm gonna put this in the description of the video, and this you should have this rack. And then you'll be able to split your frequencies up and have a nice rack to do it with, and put nice effects after everything, and, and such. Um, and yeah, if you want to shut it all down, so it's all neat, obviously, these controls here on the left will do that for you. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, 